This is the particle motion PVA practice worksheet. Number one here, a particle moves along a horizontal line, so that pos position at, at any time is given by S of t. Uh, find the instantaneous velocity at time t and at three seconds. So uh, we're going to find um, the velocity and the acceleration function just to begin with since we know we're going to use it uh, later on in the problem. So just go through power rule, t cubed, we're going to find uh, to get from position to velocity. We're going. We can take the derivative. Find the first derivative. So t cubed becomes three t squared. Twelve t squared is twenty four t. Thirty six t goes to thirty six. And let's just go ahead and find velocity uh, since we're going to use it uh, later on. So we go through uh, the derivative once again from velocity to get to acceleration. So three t squared becomes six t. Twenty four negative twenty four t becomes negative twenty four. And thirty six a constant will go to zero. All right, find the instantaneous velocity at time t, so we found that, v of t here, uh, at 3 seconds. So we can plug 3 into the velocity function to, or in for t to find the velocity. So v of 3, uh, we just enter all this into our calculator or plug it all in. We get negative 9 meters per second. Find the average velocity in the interval. So we've got to be careful here. Um, we see the word velocity, but average velocity the definition for average velocity is the change in position over change in time. I think the tendency sometimes students will, what uh, students want to do is uh, find the velocity at one second and at two seconds and then just find the average between those two velocities. But that's not quite how we do it. So just make sure uh, you understand that velocity, if it says average velocity, um, uh, the way we get to that is change in position over change in time. So to get change in position uh, over change in time, we're going to find the position at 2 and at 1 second. So plug 1 into the position function, plug 2 into the position function, and then we just do s of 2 minus s of 1. That represents the change in position over change in time, which is 2 minus 1. So 32 minus 25 is 7, divided by 1 is still 7. Part C, when is the particle at rest? Uh, to find when the particle is at rest, this is when the velocity is zero. So uh, we found our velocity function, right? We can set this equal to zero and solve for t. So if we set uh, velocity equal to zero, uh, we can factor out three and then continue factoring. We get three times t minus six times t minus two. Put this on a number line. Um, we have an endpoint at zero because we're told t is greater than or equal to zero. And then we're just going to test um, values, uh, time values, uh, in each of the intervals. So between 0 and 2, I can choose 1. Between 2 and 6, I can choose 3 to plug in. And then to the right of 6, I can plug in 7. So if I plug 1 into the velocity, I'm going to get uh, negative times a negative, which is positive. If I plug 3 into the velocity, I get negative times a positive, which is a negative. If I plug 7 into the velocity, um, 7 minus 6 is positive, 7 minus 2 is positive, so pos time positive is positive. So we know that positive represents when the particle is moving to the right, negative represents when the particle is moving left, and then moving to the right. So moving to the right will be from 0 to 2, and then from 6 to infinity. So from 0 to 2, and from 6 to infinity. Now, notice that 2 and 6, the particle is, not, is, is at rest. So... Uh, that's why we have parentheses. We don't want to include that point. Now, why do we consider zero? Why do we put a bracket around zero? Well, if we look, the condition says t is greater than or equal to zero. So we have to include zero as a potential point as part of our domain. Now, if we plug zero into the velocity function, zero minus six, zero minus two, that's negative times negative, which is positive. So that indicates that at zero, this particle is moving. And the particle is moving to the right because it has a positive value. So you've got to be careful about this, that at zero, um, we, we're going to include a bracket because at that moment in time, this particle is moving to the right. We are getting a positive value at zero. And we are also indicated that zero is part of our domain, that we include zero as part of our domain. Okay, 
So moving to the right because our velocity is positive, moves left between 2 and 6 because velocity is um, negative or less than 0. When is the particle changing directions? So changing directions is when there's a change in sign, so that's at 2 because there's a change from positive to negative. There's a change at 6 because there's a change from negative to positive, so then 2 and 6 seconds will be when the particle changes direction. Find the displacement. Displacement is simply the um, uh, change in distance uh, between um, the final and end position. So it's the final position minus the initial position. So if I plug 0 into the position function, so if we plug 0 back into the original um, s of t that's given to us, we're going to get 0. If we plug 8 in for all the t values, we can find the position to be 32. And then displacement is simply final position minus initial position. So s of 8 minus s of 0, 32 minus 0 is 32. Another thing to keep in mind is that it's possible for displacement to be negative. It's always the end position minus the initial position. Okay, 32 meters. Find the total distance traveled by the particle during the first 8 seconds. Now, total distance, we're always going to have to include the um, initial and the end point. So s of 0 and s of 8. S of eight. Now, if, the, uh, if this object is always moving in one direction between 0 and 8, then we can simply just do 32 minus 0. However, um, if we look at this chart, this, um, uh, the sign line, this number line here, velocity uh, sign line, we see that this particle is changing direction. So when it changes direction, what's happening is that um, we have to, in, we have to um, um, be able to factor in um, op or if it goes backwards we have to make sure we count that as a positive value so anytime there's a change in direction we have to make sure we mark and identify that um, uh, the position of the particle at that moment in time so there's a change in position at 2 there's a sorry change in direction at 2 there's a change in direction at 6 so to, to find the total distance we have to make sure that we mark and identify our endpoints as well as any points where there's a change in direction. So we're going to find position at 0, position at 2, position at 6, and then finally position at 8. So we already found 0 and um, 8. We just have to find s of 2 and s of 6. If I plug 2 into the position function, I get 32. If I plug 6 into the position function, I get 0. So what's happening is that this particle is moving um, in the forward direction, but then at two seconds is going to start going backwards and then at six seconds it's going to stop again and start moving forward so we have to make sure that we um, um, uh, that we um, identify and we keep track of all those moments in time where uh, this particle is changing direction all right so um, at between each of these uh, points we're going to determine how far it travels. So from 0 to 2 seconds, it's going to travel 32 meters. Uh, from uh, 2 seconds to 6 seconds, it's going to go back to the starting point, but it's still going to travel 32 meters. So we count that as a positive value. And then from 6 to 8 seconds, it's going to travel another 32 meters. So um, uh, it's going to make a total um, uh, travel total distance of 32 plus 32 plus 32, which is 96 meters. All right, find the acceleration of the particle at time t equals 3 and at t equals 3, at, uh, sorry, um, at particle, t so that means find the acceleration function and then determine what the acceleration is at um, 3 seconds. So acceleration function we found at the beginning of the problem. We found uh, the second derivative starting with the position to velocity and, and velocity to acceleration. So we simply plug um, 3 into the acceleration function. So 18 minus 24 is negative 6 meters per second squared. Notice acceleration has um, a unit of measurement of um, units per time squared. Is the particle speeding up or slowing down? Now, to determine whether a particle is speeding up or slowing down, we have to involve the signs of velocity and acceleration. So just to, um, uh, just to remind and to um, uh, just to go over this again, um, when velocity and acceleration has the same signs, um, the particle is speeding up. 
when the acceleration and acceleration have opposite signs, where one's positive and the other is negative, then the particle is slowing down. So that we're trying to determine the particle, whether a particle is speeding, or uh, speeding up or slowing down at one second. So if we plug one into the velocity, we get positive 15 meters per second. If we plug one into the acceleration, we get a negative 18 meters per second squared. Notice that there's a difference in sign, so particle is therefore slowing down since velocity and acceleration have different or opposite signs. All right, part I is the particle's velocity increasing or decreasing. Um, all right, let me make some distinction here. Uh, this looks very similar to part H. Part H is asking for whether speed is increasing or decreasing. This is asking whether the velocity is increasing or decreasing. Um, uh, velocity increasing or decreasing. This is not asking to see whether the velocity is positive or negative. Um, because notice that the word increase or and decrease um, indicates that uh, we're talking about the rate of change of velocity. And if we're talking about the rate of change of velocity, we're, we're actually saying is acceleration positive or negative. So a velocity increasing or decreasing is asking in other words, is the particle's acceler acceleration positive or negative? So at t equals 2, if we plug 2 into the acceleration function, we're going to get negative 12 meters per second squared. Negative 12 meters per second squared indicates that the velocity is decreasing. Okay. So um, make sure that you, um, that you all are clear uh, the distinction between h and i. Um, and the steps that you take. These two look very similar to each other um, and also uh, uh, anytime you see the word increase and velocity next to each other this is not asking about increasing speed, this is not asking about whether the velocity is positive or negative, this is asking about is the acceleration positive or negative.